In the final video for this week, I want to return again to the theme of symmetry. Linear transformations have a symmetry. They preserve linear subspaces. And linear transformations have another symmetry. They preserve linear algebraic operations. A symmetry is a property of a transformation which preserves something. All the square n by n matrices as a collection together is written m sub n of r, as I wrote before. However, the invertible matrices were written g l sub n of r, the general linear group. These are the transformations which are invertible, so they have no kind of projection. They do not destroy the notion of size. Volume remains volume, though it may be scaled. So in the roughest sense, they can be said to preserve the coarse notion of size or dimension. Now I have determinants. The determinant is the effect on size and orientation. However, if the determinant is 1, that means that size and orientation do not change. Matrices with determinant 1 preserve size and orientation exactly. There's also a notation for this, SL sub n of r. This is called the special linear group, the matrices of determinant 1, those that leave both size and orientation unchanged. This is a stronger symmetry than just GL of n. More is preserved by this. In mathematics, it is common to get these tiers of symmetry, ordered by how much is preserved, with some transformations preserving more and some transformations preserving less. Now here is a new idea. I have transformations which, which preserve size and orientation, those with determinant 1, the special linear ones. What if instead of size, area, or volume, I actually preserved the length entirely? Preserving length means that the length of all vectors must stay the, must stay the same. A vector of length 3 could move around, but it must be sent to another vector of length 3. In symbols, if v is a vector and a is the transformation, then the length before, length of v, and the length after, length of av, are equal. This is a little bit different from preserving areas and volumes, though it is very closely related. However, orientation can certainly be reversed while keeping lengths fixed. So this symmetry is different from determinant 1, the special linear symmetry. These matrices that preserve lengths are called orthogonal matrices. The term is very unfortunate, since orthogonal means perpendicular for vectors, but it means something sort of related but quite a bit different in this context for matrices. So I'm sorry that the term is confusing, but we are stuck with the standard terminology. I know which matrices preserve size and orientation, those with determinant 1. I can calculate that. What matrices preserve lengths? Which matrices are orthogonal matrices? I'll show you how to check this, but I need a definition. First, the Kronecker delta is a nice piece of notation which is used in many places in mathematics. It is this lowercase delta with two subscripts i and j. The Kronecker delta just keeps track of whether the indices are the same. If i equals j, the result is 1, and if i is not equal to j, the result is 0. You might think that this is a strange definition. Why do I need this? Well, it turns out that having a brief symbol for th this is pretty useful, since the idea of matching up two indices is surprisingly prevalent. I also need another definition here, the transpose of a matrix. If A is a matrix, then A superscript T is the transpose. It is the matrix with rows and columns switched. Equivalently, it is the reflection of the matrix over the diagonal. You can see this in the example. In this matrix, the rows are negative 4, negative 3, 0, 2, 12, negative 3, and negative 15, 2, 3. In the transpose, these become the columns. You can see that the first column is negative 4, negative 3, 0, um, and then so on for the second column and the third column. Also, you could also look at this as just flipping over the diagonal. The 2 and negative 3 have switched, the 0 and negative 15 have switched, and the other 2 and negative 3 have switched. The diagonal entries stay entirely the same. This is the transpose. All right, all this now lets me tell you how to recognize orthogonal matrices. First, the definition, the matrix preserves lengths. This turns out to be equivalent to a bunch of properties. An orthogonal matrix also preserves dot products. If I do a dot product before or after the transformation, the results are the same. The transpose, which I just defined, 
is very surprising equal to the inverse for an orthogonal matrix. This is very unusual. Calculating the inverse is usually a long process of row reduction. Just switching rows and columns usually does not produce the inverse, but it does for an orthogonal matrix. I can rephrase this by saying that A transpose times A is the identity matrix, and that's just the definition of the inverse, saying that A transpose is the inverse because if you multiply by A, you get the identity. The lowercase ai here are the columns of the matrix A. A matrix orthogonal, if its columns, as vectors themselves, are perpendicular to each other, and all of them have length 1. This is equivalent to saying that the dot product of the columns is 0 if they are different, dot product 0 means of course perpendicular, and 1 if they are the same, dot product of something with itself equal 1 means that its length is 1. That's the situation, 0 if different, 1 if the same, well that's exactly what I wanted to capture with the Kronecker delta notation, so I use it here. Finally, there is another preservation property, and I find this one quite surprising. To preserve lengths turns out to be almost the same as preserving angles. Preserving angles means that if there is an angle between two vectors before the transformation, that angle is the same after the transformation, even if the two vectors have moved. It turns out that preserving angles is not quite enough to be equivalent to preserving lengths. I also need that the determinant should be 1 or negative 1, but these two together do guarantee that the matrix is orthogonal, that it preserves lengths. This is a lot of information, but I hope you are getting a sense, a flavor of what kind of transformations are here. However, let me be a bit more specific to help you out. What are the orthogonal matrices in R2? Well, I had five basic types in R2, but only two are orthogonal. The rotations and reflections are orthogonal matrices. And hopefully this makes a little sense. If I rotate, I haven't changed any lengths or angles, I've just spun everything together. Likewise, a reflection is a flip over a line, but lengths and angles, and angles don't change in this flip. However, skews, dilations, and projections all do mess with lengths and angles, so they cannot be orthogonal. Moving on from R2, here are a few other properties. If A is orthogonal, so is its inverse, and this makes sense. If going forward preserves lengths, well then going backwards will do so as well. All orthogonal matrices have determinant 1 or negative 1. This is perhaps not surprising. By preserving lengths, areas, volumes are also preserved. It's going to be hard to change area or volume if I can't change length. However, the orientation can switch, as it does in the reflection. Be careful here. All orthogonal matrices have determinant 1 or negative 1, but not all matrices with the determinant 1 or negative 1 are orthogonal. Orthogonal is quite a bit of a stronger condition here. If two matrices are orthogonal, then their composition is also orthogonal. This also, I think, makes sense. If A preserves lengths and B preserves lengths, then doing them both will still preserve lengths. Finally, some notation. The collection of orthogonal matrices is called the orthogonal group and written O sub n of R. Sometimes this is just written O of n when the coefficients are understood. Likewise, there are also special orthogonal matrices, and those are the which are orthogonal and also have determinant 1. These are written SO sub n of R, or just sometimes SO of n. All this has been pretty abstract, so let me end with some actual matrices. This is an orthogonal matrix in R3. It multiplies everything by negative 1, since the length of a vector is the root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, multiplying the coefficients by negative 1 has no effect on length, so this preserves length. I can also check all the other properties if I wish. The columns are orthogonal to each other, take any two, and the dot product will be 0, and they are all of length 1. Usually, the matrices are a bit more complicated. This is also an orthogonal matrix. I can calculate that all the columns have length 1, indeed that's what the strange denominators are all about. The length of the first column is 5 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared over 38, but that numerator is 25 plus 9 plus 4, which is 38, and 38 over 38 is 1. And the same for the other columns, if you square all the terms and add them up, you get 1. Similarly, all of the columns are orthogonal to each other. Let me show this by taking the dot product of the first two. 
Conveniently, in the dot product, I can actually ignore the denominators, since they are the same for all three entries and thus can be factored out. The dot product of the first two is negative 5 times 3, which is negative 15, plus negative 3 times negative 7, which is positive 21, plus negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6, negative 15 plus 21 minus 6 is indeed 0, and feel free to check the other two pairs. This satisfies the column condition, so this is an orthogonal matrix. By checking that, I surprisingly know that this matrix preserves all lengths, preserves all angles, and has determined either one or negative one.